welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutlery. Hey, today we're doing a half breed blades. It's their mil spec folder series. This is the MILF, the MILF 02. Before we get into the video, 22 veterans a day in this country take their own lives. Vets, love you. You have a place here. We back to blue over here. We sport Leo. How do you do that, Scab? Well, we don't break the damn law. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. Now, real quick, guys, here's a couple comparisons. Uh, this is against the Cold Steel 8010, a great knife, just to show you some size. Hey, real quick, I am not in the military, never have been, not a veteran. Every so often, I feel like I need to bring that up. I just have a heart for vets, especially the half, hashtag 22 a day. I just want to make that clear. Now, on to the video. We've done a couple of different half breed blades. Now, all of the ones I've done are Kirk's. So here's the deal. They've all been well used. So if you see a little start stop or something like that on the blade, Kirk does a great job of maintaining his blades. He really, really does. He keeps them well, uh, well maintained. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. He keeps them strapped, keeps them ready to go. Um, the sharpness level come to me on this one was probably a seven or eight. And again, there's been a couple months of usage on it. Half Breed Blades is out of Australia. Now, we're going to stab his tire here several times. And let me just say this. The knife is a frame lock. The blade length is 3.5 inches. Uh, the steel CPM S30V. I'm a big fan of S30V. It has a uh, 0.19 inch or 5 millimeter thickness. The Rockwell hardness is 59 to 60. It is a hollow grind and it is PVD coated. Ultra, ultra, ultra tough coating right there. The handle, well, let me do it like this. The handle, the frame liner, and the spacers are all 420J2 stainless steel. That's a Japanese stainless. The handle scales are G10. Handle length is 5.51 inches. You know I love that. And the thickness is 0.59 inches. The overall length is 8.26 inches. It is a great folder. Ample, ample handle, which I absolutely love. Again, it's a frame lock. This is a drop point. They have several, several different uh, styles. Now, we're doing the Donnie B all day. Throw it at the stump test and the drop test to check the balance of the knife, but to also check the lock. This is a frame lock. At no point did the frame lock give, ever. It was it held up really, really well in the throwing and the stabbing test, things like that. Now, if you are not subscribed to Donnie B all day, please do so. He's trying to get to 10,000. Also, if you are not subscribed to uh, Blade Talk with Scav and Joe, you need to be, that's our other channel, and subscribe to Joe from Steel Forged and Fire Sword and Knife. Now here, we are doing the JP or the John Peters stab test. Now, half breed blades, I've done uh, this one. I've done their big folder, which is just nasty. And I've done a, a, a fixed blade, all of it, the large bush folder and the large bush knife were the other two that I've done. All of them were great stabbers. And this knife is absolutely fantastic. Now, I set these videos up. I say this all the time because I am a novice at best. Basically, we're not even really reviewing. We're just kind of doing a quick knife demonstration. So what you're going to see throughout this video is, is just stuff you would use a pocket knife in everyday life for. Now, stabbing a tire, you're not going to do that every day. Some of that is for visual effect and just to check the overall toughness of the knife. They themselves, half-breed blades, uh, themselves say they build uh, overbuilt knives. Now, for extreme use, these knives that I've tested have been fantastic. We're going to do a little hose cutting right here. Now, right here, I stress the blade a little bit. Do it in the bend. When you when you cut it in the bend like that, it does add a little stress, so it's not as easy. Like I said, the knife came in pretty, pretty sharp, but Kurt's carried it a good bit. I've carried it probably for a week or so just to get some overall uh, use out of it. It carries very well in the pocket, very comfortable, and a great looking knife. Now it's got some good jimping on the back, and it does have, honestly, it has a pretty decent little finger choil. There's the jimping, and so we're gonna try a little different grip right here, gonna use the choil, and just do some quick pulls, uh, quick 
slashes with a knife, quick cuts, whatever you want to call it. The knife is very, very comfortable in hand throughout the JP stab test and through just stabbing the stump. I found no hot spots, no, no slippage, nothing. You see it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. I don't usually get too excited about them, but it's a great looking blade. This is just a really, really good looking blade. Here we're going to do our zip tie test. And we do this too. Again, I've had a lot of people say, hey man, I'm glad you do the zip tie thing. And one guy was like, dude, I've busted a bunch of blades, chipped a bunch of blades on zip ties. So for me, it's a perfect test. Now, this is our two, two and a half inch uh, toe strap, ratchet strap, whatever you want to call it. This thing's pretty dang tough. So we're just going to use the tip here and see what we got. And honestly, I was pretty damn surprised at how well it just kind of blew right through there. Um, just put a little bit of pressure and, 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 and pulled it through and it came straight through. Now, just some quick chops right here. And again, I like doing some of this stuff just to see if it'll roll the edge, chip the edge. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Worked out very well. Again, we're going to put a little more pressure, use the tip, and it cut it right there in twain, son. This is, this, I've really, just to take a quick second, I've really enjoyed carrying this knife. Um, the kind of work I do, the kind of stuff I do, that kind of thing, man, it just holds up good. And it's very comfortable in hand. Now, it is a flipper. And what you'll see, now, let me say this. Right here, I think one time the lock slipped, but that was more my fault by the way I was holding it. I do want to say this. No, you're probably not going to baton with a folder. I get it. I do it again to see if you can, one. And I mean, I know you can, but just to kind of test the lock out, to test the grip out, to see how it feels, to see all of that. Would I do it typically? No, you would use the right tool, but I do use it for the demonstrations. Now, one thing I did want to do, that was that old petrified hardwood from Home Depot. Man, that stuff's just brick bat hard. So I wanted to do a little something else. Some of this wood you're seeing me processing up. Now remember, tomorrow, Friday, we're going to do a little bit of bushcraft, do a fire. So what you're seeing me really doing with some of this batoning is getting all the wood together for the fire. I'm excited for the video, but I am getting a lot of stuff ready for tomorrow. So that's kind of what we're doing there. And again, what I like to do, especially with pocket knives, is just open and close them one-handed. I think that's a big thing. If nothing else, not you may not be one that has to have an, a one-handed opening, but it's good to have the option. And honestly, no problems at any point. Sometimes you'll get a frame lock and it'll stick, it'll, not here. The lock is solid, it locks up well, it's very easy to control, but when it's time to put the knife up, there's no sticking, there's none of that. And I, that's a big thing with me, honestly, because a lot of times I'll grip a little too tight. Now, we test a little bit of the edge right here, just going to make some quick curly cues. Some, we try to do a little bit of everyday pocket knife stuff, a little bit of wood stuff, just a little bit of everything to give you a pretty good overall view of the knife. I can tell you this, a half breed blades is in my future. The three knives that I've been able to demonstrate and Kirk, man, thank you so much. Cause these are all awesome. Have all performed exceptionally well, not just good, but exceptionally well. And remember, I can't stress this enough. The ones that Kirk lets me use, he's carried. So these haven't, these are, these are factory edges that's been used. He's just maintained. Here we're just going to cut a little bit of uh, string. Just again, some everyday use. Do I recommend the knife? Absolutely. But again, the point of my channel is not, you know, we're not QVC. We're not trying to sell anything. The point of my channel is just kind of for me to learn and grow as we go. And to maybe give you a good demonstration of a knife if you're considering buying them now. They are owned and based out of Australia, but they do use some American-made parts. That's important to me. Now, right here, this is just kind of a walkabout. We're going to cut up some plastic bottles. We're going to do a couple more things. Uh, one thing I am going to do, um, we've got a couple minutes left, but one thing we are going to do is I'm going to make a little feather stick for tomorrow that I'm going to use in the fire tomorrow. And again, control. The, just the knife is just a joy to carry. It's easy to control. 
if you see any little tug any little pull like i said i've carried it for probably a couple weeks and kirk's had it for a couple months so there is some wear there um at some point i probably will have it sharpened up for him but the knife performed exceptionally exceptionally well and again it just rides nice in the pocket you know it's there and it's very very reliable there's a really good look at it now here's some of that old fat wood we're just going to do a quick little feather stick and right here guys that's what i'm kind of talking about the control just able to just kind of put along no problem very easy very nice well listen guys got about a minute left I want to tell you, I appreciate y'all choosing this video to watch. Thank you for riding with me. Thank you for supporting me. Man, it means the world to me. And I am so thankful for each and every one of you. My boy Mikey over at Cerebral Balls, he says it best. He says, Gab, never give up, never surrender, and everything will be all right. Mikey's true. It gets a little tough sometimes, but he's true. To half breed blades, man outstanding job this is their uh, mil spec folder series the milf-02 straight up badassery well guys i'm scared you're not i'll see y'all tomorrow good lord willing and the creek don't rise i'm gone son <laughs>